Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about a potential successor for Bob Iger after he leaves. Of course, at Disney, he's only going to be there for two years, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Supposedly. And uh, the top contender, I guess, is Cruella DeVille herself. I am not surprised by this. Actually, I was going to I was going to do a video on this before and suggest this because the the story was that there were some people that were at the company already who were in um, the running for CEO, but they weren't they wouldn't be ready like to take over yeah. fast enough. So they get rid of Chapek. Plus, they're, they the story is she was behind the coup that got rid of Chapek. Well, yeah, and actually Deadline is pointing that out, which is very interesting. Uh, Got to give a hat tip to my friend Kay, who sent this over. Uh, Disney's Christine McCarthy emerges as the, as the uh, top CEO contenders to succeed Bob Iger. CFO was King Killer, who took down Bob Chapek. Yeah, that was the story. The story was she was the one who went to the board. Um, now this is also Christy McCarthy who, you know, makes comments that he'll, you know, would be glad to have, you know, smaller food for the same amount of money or not more money because they you know, they're, they're fat. It'll help their waistlines. This is Christy McCarthy that while everybody else was like getting, you know, food pantries and stuff like that, got like up to $11 million bonus. Now other, other executives did too, but she's notorious for saying things are doing things. And then, you know. She also, I think, was there when the a whole thing with the um, whistleblower was going on too. Yes, yes, she would have been in charge then, so she was probably so she's the she's the final boss of Disney. Now, of course, there are rumors swirling, and they're just rumors, but I've seen more and more articles about lately that uh, Bob Iger can actually unload Disney onto Apple between now and then, and there does seem to be some supporting evidence for that, but we don't know. But if if things stay the way that they are, she probably is the most logical candidate. And and if you thought Bob Chapek was bad, <laughs> that's all yeah. she is is a bean counter. I mean, that would be the wrong person to put in charge of Disney. She's literally, the CFO. Yes, uh, she counts puppies too. <laughs> How many yeah. puppies does it take but to to make this this coat? I would she's not. Wearing? I would not put her in charge. But then again, all they care about is money, isn't it? That's true. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 282,000 subs. Hit the subscribe button. Helps us grow the channel. Uh, share the video. Share the love. Share the love. Uh, yeah, Christine McCarthy, king killer. They're calling her a king killer. Um, because she's the one who was behind the coup, basically, mm -hmm. to get rid of Bob Chapek. And, uh, you know, Deadline says, with the unexpected return of Bob Iger last month, uh, the entertainment gi giant's veteran chief financial officer, Christy McCarthy, has emerged as the leading contender to take over the job. You know what struck me? Now, I don't know this, but it was weird. Like, she and Iger were, like, you know, thicker than thieves. Then Iger gets gone. And then, you know, after he's gone, and she was reporting to the board, she reported to Iger, too. Because behind the scenes, Iger was supposedly making comments that he wasn't thinking too highly of Chapek. And then, you know... There was word that some of the people that were behind his getting gone were the ones that might be in the running for CEO, but they weren't to a position where they were ready yet. So they were bringing Iger back supposedly to get them ready. If they aren't selling to Apple, you know, it, it, just someone looking outside in, it looks like she and Bob staged this whole thing to get rid yes. of the other Bob yes. so she could be in charge. I get, the, I get the vibe that Bob Iger was not happy with Bob Chapek as the choice to succeed him. Uh, well, a lot of people weren't. That, that was, was a bad decision. That was probably the board kind of like, hey, we're going into a pandemic. We need somebody that can. Who was the money guy last time? Look what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, but here's another money, money person here. So anyway, they say Christina has always been a force to be reckoned with, but you have to put her on a list of top five possibilities after the last few weeks. A Disney insider said of the now prominent CFO. Well, again, they're saying there were several people within the company they were considering. That mm -hmm. lines with what I was saying. If McCarthy was handed the keys to the Magic Kingdom in the next 23 months, the exec would occupy a historic position as the first female CEO in Disney's history. Um, would they do it just to say that they had the first I Disney wondered, and CEO? I, I wondered. I, I kind of, I was going to, that's something else I was going to say was I've been thinking to myself, I, get, I guarantee the next CEO will be a woman. Because they've been pushing all kinds of females to like positions. I mean, not that I'm against women in power, but there have been have a lot of, of positions that have been refilled with women. Yeah, a lot of them. And we know that Disney's all all in on the uh, DEI. I actually got a uh, uh, got an email today from uh, some PR firm 
for one of our companies was like, hey, you know, if you've got a DEI diversity and inclusion equity program, you want to put a press release out about it because you might get some venture capital. Mm -hmm. literally telling us that, but no, I mean, they're all about that. We know they're all about that. That's their key. So, you know, what way to, I'm ginger. Does that count? There you go. But what way to celebrate the next 100 years of Disney? It's like, you know, handing the keys of the magic kingdom over to a woman Mm -hmm. who skins puppies. No, yeah. she doesn't actually skim poppies. I would not poppies, put McCarthy in charge, but that is me. But she does get she does get uh, ridiculous bonuses and and make some you know off dumb color comments. dumb comments. To be fair, Chapik made so many you know stupid comments. You know who's keeping score? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. So she's been the CFO since 2015. She was a steady hand in the previous Iger regime, and when Chapik was in charge, McCarthy was influential in helping to successfully engineer engineer a string of key mergers and adept at raising and husbanding cash during the depth of COVID. That's so they want her because she'll bring them money. They don't care about the customers. They just want to find where, new ways to fleece the customer. Yeah, on November 20th, she became the public face of the Disney coup. Distraught by the company's dire bottom line and missteps by Chapek over the last 18 months, McCarthy is the executive whose name is now in the history books for going to the board and its chair, Susan Arnold, to orchestrate a revolt in the executive suite that brought Iger back after less than a year of official retirement. Mm. Uh, very convenient. They're calling her a king killer. Basically, she's, yeah, you know, stabbing the king in the back, make mm-hmm. sure she gets to take over. Uh, Going to Arnold in mid-November, McCarthy, one of the highest-ranking women in in the entertainment industry, threatened to resign if Chapek was not cut loose immediately. If you don't get rid of him so you can be my friend and so I can take over, I'm going to quit. Him or me, Susan. Him or me. In the 35 years I've been doing this. Let's get rid of both. Yes, get rid of all (laughs) of them. Start over. In the 35 years I've been doing this, I've never seen a CFO go around a CEO. Yeah, this is like a movie. she looks, I mean, I think me, I'm not trying to be judgy with people's appearances, but she looks like the caddy type. Yes. You know. Oh, yes, she does. Uh, so this is one longtime Wall Street analyst with a tinge of amazement in his voice. Weeks after McCarthy cut the knees out from under Bob Chapek in his reign of error. Oh, his reign of error. I'm so proud of that one. <laughs> uh, now, Iger, who had handpicked Chapek in late 2019, I don't think, I don't buy that. Sorry. I don't buy that either. I, I think that the board pushed him to. I think that too. Yeah, because he didn't look very happy. He hasn't. They have not gotten along for a while now since he was made CEO. And I, yeah, I don't buy it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So now he has uh, two years to pick and position a viable successor in that vein. It's not surprising the CFO's name appears at the top five list of talked about candidates mm-hmm. for the future CEO job. However, with Iger's successor track record in mind, that list, which some have placed Dana Walden, chair of Disney General Entertainment. Like Content the one that was pushing for the diversity and inclusion yes, things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, reality is there aren't a lot of seasoned executives out there in the Disney pipeline that have the institutional memory, board relationships, and leadership chops to avoid on-the-job training and a repeat of the Chapek experiment. Yeah, because they all leave. Tom yeah. Staggs left. Uh, Kevin Mayer yeah, left. Yeah, because they knew they were going to get passed over. Yeah. And... Um, they said unless Disney agreed to buy out Candle Media, which uh, Staggs and, and Mayer are, are in charge of, mm-hmm. unless they agree to buy it out, they're probably not going to get them back from Blackstone. Right. They've been getting backed by Blackstone. Backed by Blackstone. Speaking of DEI. And they were the ones, were the ones who went and got Cocoa Melon? Yes. They paid $3 billion for Cocoa that Melon. That was Blackstone, right? That was Black. Yep. Uh, analysts and fund managers really like Staggs. He was the top choice. A lot he of people was. thought he was going to be the top and choice. And then he up and, up and left. Um, they said that uh, McCarthy is very honest, very capable, and a straight shooter. No, she's very honest and very capable. She's very capable of, you know, gouging the customer to bring them more money. Yes. Uh, I mean, honestly, it'll be Chapek 2.0. From a consumer standpoint, you do not want her as a CEO of Disney. They said she really shined when the pandemic hit, and I misread that as shit. When the pandemic shit the bed, she did exactly what the CFO should do. Took an $11 million bonus while, while yeah, her while lining up a bunch underlings, of, you know. Right, went to a food pantry. That they, food they had pantry. to pay to help, you know, get money, raise money to support. Um, but yeah, she uh, was one of the ones that set up all the loans and all that crap that they took all the money out. Yes, which they have to pay those back, by the way. They do. Uh, she put together a huge bundle of cash at reasonable rates very quickly to protect the company. Disney's last financial results were shocking as the company spent uh, spent and spent on streaming with losses in the division ballooning to $1.5 billion. Here's the thing, though. CEOs in charge, CFOs under the CEO. 
No, I mean, some of the stuff she probably did was probably because she was told to do it by, by Chapek. However, I'm sure a lot of choices were made she might have been privy to or a part of. So if choices were made and she was involved, is it is that, that hard to believe that she maybe was, oh, yes, yes, that's a great idea, Bob. Go do that, yeah. Bob. You know, uh, I don't know why Bob's doing this. He's running amok. I, I would be a much better choice. Yeah, this this sounds very Machiavellian here. It sounds like she was maybe pulling the straight. Oh yeah, Bob, that's a great idea. You go ahead and do that. And I've I've seen. Look, I have seen people. I've worked in corporate. I've seen people do that. Set their underlings or their competition up for failure, so they can they can take the top spot. I've seen it in real time. Like uh, you know, so it's possible. But here's what I was thinking, and they're bringing this up too. Her she's age. old. Yes. And I'm trying to be a jerk, but she's like up there. So is Iger. They're they're both up there, and I, what is it with people like you always have to pick these really old people to lead companies, lead the country, you know? I mean, <laughs> you want you want the experience, but th that's yes, the thing. No, she's sixty seven years old. That I mean, that's not ancient. Well, in two years, she's gonna be sixty nine. Yeah, but we're talking like if you want somebody that's gonna hang in there because Iger was in charge for you know fifteen years or whatever. Uh, first time, now he's got another two. You want somebody that's gonna be in there for fifteen years? You're talking she's gonna be in her eighties. You know, and we know what happens when you put people in their 80s in charge of things. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, we've seen it. We've seen it multiple times over the last couple of years, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you don't want somebody that's like 35 that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. But same. And yeah, this girl is like already 67 years old and he's leaving in two years. Could you get somebody that was maybe 50, 55? Because at least then you probably got a good 15 years out of them. 10. Well, well Iger was, he was. Uh, he was like 50, I think. When yeah, because I was say he left uh, six years ago. And he's 60, okay, he's 71 now. He's supposed to retire six years ago, but he was there for what, 15 years? Yeah. So, yeah, 50s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So that's that's a pretty fair age because you're, you're seasoned, but you're still young enough to. Hopefully stick around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when you're pushing 70, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. Most people are thinking about retirement. But it's interesting that they did this article because I've been thinking about this, the, the same things myself. And I was actually thinking about doing a video on this. I have heard that she was you know, behind him getting gone. We have heard that she was one of like a, like a five people that they're yeah. looking at for replacement. I knew that already. So I thought about doing it. But it, it's interesting. Deadline went there. How would the public react to the person who basically pushed Chapek out the door? You know, how would they react to her getting the job? Because at that point, there's going to be this big cloud around her that's going to be like, oh, that conniving bitch. She basically got her boss fired so she could take his job. Right. You well, know, people that's... are saying they're, they're saying that we don't need a CFO no. operations person. You want someone with a visionary to run an entertainment company. Uh, some of the other being kind of like Chapek. Exactly. People are like, that's a good pick. Where have you been? Anonymous. You that's probably your, her. Slap yourself. It's probably her. No, this would be honestly, honestly be great. Anonymous. You no. Know, uh, Disney needs to define itself. Is this company a movie company or a parks? It really a parks play. CFO, not best creative lead for a film company. Also anonymous, but I agree with you. You can you can take raise your hand and pat yourself on the back. The other people just slap yourself because you don't you just stop talking. I mean, this is a tough one because, you know, you need somebody that is, you know, gets the creative side of things, but also can lead the company. And a lot of times the two are not the same. This is why, you know, historically, you know, uh, Disney was run by um, Roy Disney, the financials, and then Walt Disney, who did all the creative, you know, the, the, the brothers worked together and it worked out really well because Walt wasn't, I mean, he had a lot of good ideas, but he wasn't the, the best businessman. Uh, Roy was a good bean counter, you know, and he trusted Walt, but he also made the stuff happen and made it go. And uh, I know somebody who's good at both. I'm not saying you should run Disney. I'm just saying I know somebody who's good at both. And, no. And that's, I'm not saying that you should. Oh, you're talking about Henry Cavill again. No, no I'm talking yeah. about you. Actually, you can do both. I've seen you do it. Yeah, that's not y'all. No, not really. the scale. Clownfish thinks that they no. can run Disney. I would. Mm. Would you even want that job? Hell no. No. Hell no. There is not enough alpacas in the world for me to want that job. No. I mean, the money would be nice, but one you'd never get to spend it because you'd never have a free moment. And uh, yeah, you'd have everybody gunning for you, and then your CFO is going to freaking go behind sta your back, and stab you in the back, and try to take your job. But no, I think they need somebody that came up through the ranks personally, and you don't want to bring an outsider in because Disney is a very peculiar beast. But I think, I mean, Lassiter would have been a good creative officer, but 
that whole thing happened. I don't think he was that good of a businessman. I couldn't so. do it because every time I had to say ARPU, I'd start laughing or say, who made this up? This is stupid. ARPU. ARPU. Sounds uh, like a Simpsons character. Ar <laughs> Ar ARPU deterred. That's, that's the company. That's their new shit colored droid. Yeah, <laughs> see, I did never. did never. Anyway. I wasn't saying they would. I didn't. I, I, I wasn't saying. I they wouldn't know. hire me to even wash dishes there now. Are you kidding me? I wasn't thinking they were. I was just saying, you know, person I know they can do both. Anyway. Uh, there's no, there's, there's, there's other people. the scale of Disney. Sorry. I love Todd you. McFarlane. Todd McFarlane can do it. No. All right. Anyway, we're going to wrap this yeah. up. Uh, I, I hope she doesn't get the job for multiple reasons, just because, again, I don't want another bean counter. And two, you're rewarding somebody for basically pushing their boss out of the yeah. window. You know, and I, I don't think it's cool either. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.